Bryant has been gone from us 18 years, but none of the 83,000 plus in Legion Field tonight thinks for even a moment. He is not still looking down, watching his beloved Crimson Tide, number 13 in the country this week as they play host to the Southern Miss Golden Eagles. And welcome to Birmingham. I'm Dave Barnett. Don't think for a minute this is a roll tide roll thing for Alabama. They certainly don't tonight. They expect a battle and all they have to do is look two weeks ago to the Tennessee game when Southern Miss lost only 1916 partly because of a two point conversion call that was missed that prevented the Golden Eagles from driving for what would have been the tying touchdown in the fourth quarter and Bill Curry what Southern Miss hopes they have from the first quarter on tonight is that team that played the fourth quarter so well in Knoxville you're exactly right David and that team did something that I thought was literally impossible. They drove the length of the field against a very good volunteer team, not once but twice in the fourth quarter for touchdowns, 83 yards and 96 yards respectively. All that was good enough to do was to get them within three points, another loss. Jeff Bauer is sick of these moral victories and these microcosms of the kinds of games that they play against the big teams. Their next target, Alabama, tonight. And on that subject, uh, my buddy, Mike Gold. Well, and Alabama trying to find out just who they are. Mike DeVos said they're searching for their identity at this point. They haven't played well, save for one half against Vanderbilt. He's trying to find out which team is going to show up, underachieving defense and an offense, trying to figure out if they want to spread it out or if they want to go a two-back system. Either way, one thing is for sure, if they're going to score and move offensively, this man, Freddie Millens, has got to touch the ball. 16 touches only in the first two games, just three last week against Vanderbilt. He's got to get his hands on the ball. The coaches say at least 10 to 15 times for them to have a shot in this game. And that falls on Tyler Watts, who's the starting quarterback. He started last year's 35-14 win, but that goes against the grain. Five of the last seven have been close. We expect this one to be as well. Hannah has it teed up for Southern Miss. Arvin Richard back deep. Waiting for the kick along with Freddie Millens right there. to the 33 a return of 25 yards and Tyler Watts gets the start today he continues to go back and forth with Andrew Zhao at quarterback we expect to see Zhao sometime probably in the second quarter Watts the better runner of the two with Galloway and McClintock in his backfield McAdley and Millen to the wide outs and Terry Jones Jr. is the tight end and he's pretty much the only tight end they are very thin at that position they really don't have any true tight end but they feel they can play alongside Jones. Southern Miss will show almost a different defensive front every single play. They come after Watson second for a loss of five. First man there is Cedric Scott, their senior defensive end, and a marker is down at the end of the play. Referee Harold Mitchell. From the Southeastern Conference, this officiating crew. Offensive line up front. Sean Draper, they have moved from backup tight end to left tackle. Red Mill, Hogan, Cuthbert, very solid. Dante Ellington as well. They move him from left to right tackle. In the front four they face, Scott and Scott, along with John Nix and Terrell Paul. Not the way to start there. Good penetration by the Southern Miss defense, but they pull the, get the face mask on Watts on the sack. The Southern Miss defense will be attacking all night long on the gap from the corners any way they can to get pressure on this quarterback. So that break for Alabama makes it first and five rather than second and 15. And Watts with the give and immediately swarmed under Ahmad Galloway. 
Linebacking crew for Southern Miss, very active. And they feature McGee, Vaughn, and Zaid Houston, who's the only senior in that group. In their defensive backfield, Keon Moore, Raymond Walls, the corners, Chad Williams at one safety, and Leo Barnes, the leader of the secondary at Rovery, led him to Tennessee with 11 tackles and an interception, which set up their only score until that fourth quarter rally that almost pulled it out. Second and eight, Millens has it for the first time on the reverse. And is cut down before he can turn the corner by Chris Vaughn. And very quickly, we see why Chris Vaughn got a late promotion to the starting linebacker position tonight. Well, they said early they're going to get the ball to Millens. They want to get some excitement in this offense. They feel it's been dead a little bit. This man is the one that can get the flare into it, get him on the corner, get him outside. Good block, and especially by the tight end Terry Jones Jr. to get him the corner. They're going to get the ball in the Millen's hands as much as they can early to provide a spark for what has been a somewhat dead team in the beginning of the game. They'd like that 234 yards per game, not after two. Galloway across midfield with the Alabama first down and a pickup of 13 before Leo Barnes finally runs him down. One of the things that's been missing from the Alabama football team, not just the offense, but on both sides of the ball, is the kind of zip and power blocking that Alabama comes to expect. Watch the fullback right here, Dustin McClintock, forces two men to jump him, not keep good football position, and allows Galloway a nice game for the first down. Galloway against Vanderbilt, 79 yards on his first touch, which eclipsed his entire career rally to that point. Short toss, good for another first down. Millens for 11, wrapped up quickly by Chad Williams. I really think another key to this football game, and Mike, you're exactly right on the subject of Freddie Millens, but also when Millens gets open, Tyler Watts has got to deliver the ball with accuracy and precision, which he did in that case. Rhythm passing, one, two, three, four, five, set, throw. That wasn't a perfect pass, but it was close enough that Millens could come down with it. And Millens taking probably only this play as the three here. Go three wides. Galloway is the only back. And off tackle tripped up. After a pickup of just one to Quincy Scott, the nose tackle, senior from the place, Louisiana. Talk right in the beginning of the game of this Alabama offense. Which way do they want to go? Do they want to be spread? Do they want to be two back? They're going to go a little bit of each. They've run wide. They've had one back. They've had two back. They're trying to run up the middle. That's the offense that they want. They haven't been able to mix it up as good as this in the first two games. Yeah, and they're playing against a defense, Mike, that lines up 190 different ways. <laughs> they don't want that defense to be able to draw a beat on their offense any more than the reciprocal. And with the play clock down to four, Tyler Watts has to call the first time out with 11.35 in the Miss Golden Eagles in the 13th ranked Crimson Tide of Alabama. Due to time constraints, we now move ahead and pick up further action. Back in Alabama, Southern Miss quarterback Jeff Kelly said that somebody hit him after he had released the knee, so it was not planted. He said he just feels a burning. They did the ACL test. It does not appear that he has any torn ligaments, and so he will come back in. Well, the most hopeful sign is the fact he's on the uh, telephone upstairs, so he's preparing for that next series. Meanwhile, here's how the last series ended for him. Yeah, he got hit low, low and high. Got grabbed the lower leg and then uh, up top got bent over it. It'd be good to go next time they get it. Score was 757 to the first, and Alabama runs option, and Tyler Watts keeps and picks up only a couple of yards. Tyler Watts, sophomore out of Pelham, Alabama. Two starts as a freshman, including this matchup last year, which they won easily, 35 to 14. Most of the Alabama Southern Miss matchups of the last several years have not been anywhere near that easy. I'm going to say this again and again, Dave. He's going to have to set up, throw on rhythm with accuracy for his offense to be consistent in this game against this kind of defense. A key to Alabama's moving the ball. His two touchdowns in his career. Five interceptions. Al thought of as the passing quarterback. We haven't seen him yet. Can't throw much better than that one. A strike to Antonio Carter near the first down marker. 
That's one way to do it, too, to get your quarterback a little confidence, get him a little time. You have a very rush-happy defense in Southern Michigan. Get him on, out of the pocket a little bit. Number 30, Dustin McClintock. Nice block, cut down. This is what gives. Watch the corner. He'll go low, take him out. Now he's got the corner. Now he's got time, and he's got an open alley to throw. And they'll pick up the first down easily on what was third about a foot. Ahmad Galloway and Dustin McClintock back there, and it's McClintock who plunges to the 47 of the Golden Eagles. Yeah, and that was McClintock's carry for the game. <laughs> Fullback dominated offense. Maybe for the month. We saw what he does best. He's throwing his body around out there. He's a terrific blocker, and he actually looked good running that football. He might get to run it again. Offset eye. Motion from Carter, who takes the reverse pitch. Southern Miss had it red, and they had him hemmed in, and a lot of running to pick up three yards. Could have been much worse. Could have lost ten. Roy McGee finishes him off. Yeah, Raymond Walls missed him. He had the shot to get him behind the line. Also, good block. Such an aggressive defense. You're trying to take advantage of it here, getting on the corner as they get upfield. There's one shot to get him. Good block there by Sam Collins. There's right there. Raymond Walls got to make that tackle and wrap it up. That's going to be hard to do, Bill. I think on either one of these defenses, they're so aggressive. They're up the field so quick. That's why you're seeing Mr. Redd. Ball sweep, Arvin Richard with the throwback, and it's intercepted. Southern Miss will get a touchdown. Raymond Walls, 54 yards. Alabama tries to get exotic, and it blows up in their face. One of the oldest plays in the book is a throwback from the tailback to the quarterback. Every defensive coordinator works weeks, months, years to teach his backside contained people to stay at home. That's the phrase. Very seldom does a tailback make a good, sharp precision throw. This one's no exception. In these games against ranked opponents, what has killed Southern Miss over the years is touchdowns just like that one that they give up, and they get one of their own this time, and tactic on the extra point. Grant Hanna makes it seven to nothing. It's a very difficult play, Bill, don't you think, for him to not throw it because he can't stop and set and look to see if he's covered. He's just turning and throwing the ball. People will say, why is he throwing it? Very tough for him to stop, see he's covered, and not throw it. It's just part of the play. He turns and he whips it, hung in the air way too much. And as you said, you're taught to stay home. Very disciplined defensive play right But I'll guarantee you what Neil Calloway, the offensive coordinator for Alabama, teaches his backs, including Richard, is if you see anything with a white shirt on that side of the field, just tuck it and take what you can get. He just threw it without looking, as you say. I assure you he was coached to take a glance out of the corner of his eye. Tough, yes, but you have to do it because the risk is too great because what you give up is that, six points. And the other thing about a team like Southern Miss, you give them a little hope, a little inspiration early in the game, and you got a real eagle fight on your hand. Not a dog fight, an eagle <laughs> fight. I tell you what, I'm going to love this game as an ex-defender because these, both these defenses are just absolutely attacking defenses. I think you're going to see a great defensive game. Well, here. I noticed that you talk a lot about being a defender when the defenses are playing well. <laughs> Meanwhile, they continue to work on the knee of Jeff Keller, which, as Holly Rose just told us, uh, was not an ACL problem. He did not have his foot planted when he got high low at the end of their last series. And he got on the phone upstairs and warmed up, and the lip started to disappear. Jeff Bauer, for a change on the uh, happy side of a return touchdown. So many games they have lost because of plays just like that. Nebraska last year, two turnovers returned for scores. They held Nebraska in Lincoln to 185 total yards. That's usually about a quarter of the Nebraska <laughs> offense and lost 20 to 13 because plays like that went against him. How could you tell he was happy? He scared the smile. He's afraid if he smiles, something, something bad will happen. Yeah, can't jinx this. I know the feeling all too well, Jeff. Richard, he threw the ill-fated throwback pass back deep with Millens. 
kicks have been aimed pretty way, and the rest has been bounced through the end zone. That in itself is a little surprising. You'd think he'd do anything to kick away from Freddie. I don't think he meant to kick either one of them over there. I think he meant to get it up because he kicked both of them low, and you don't want Freddie getting a low kick. It'll come back at you about the same speed it went down there. <laughs> yeah, actually, Vanderbilt, uh, the Alabama coach, has said Vanderbilt did a, uh, a great job kicking away or punting away from Freddie, not letting him get the touch again. He only had three touches in uh, that game last week, two already tonight. That's touching. Touches, touching. Long in you. Out of the eye. Golden seven to nothing. And Galloway finds himself hemmed in for a loss of three. First guy there, John Nix, 290 pound defensive tackle. You know what impresses me, Mike? All four of these guys up front for Southern Mississippi are penetrating, flying around, making plays. It's as if each of them's taking responsibility, not just to play his gap, but to get all up the field and get all in people's face. It is so hard to get past the front four. And you're talking about the guards and center, Red Mill, Hogan, and Cuthbert for Alabama have 29 starts apiece, but all, all three of them oh, have yeah, it apiece. They're, they're big they're time. Yeah. They're getting beat right now. How do we go on second and 12? Watch those all day and lofts it over Millens along the sideline. It'll be third and 12. That's a throw that Watts can make and must make. Again, it goes back to being accurate and precise and throwing with good timing. Alabama's quarterback and receivers are not timed up well. Only once have they ever asked Tyler Watts to win a game through the air. Only once has he thrown it as many as 20 times in one game. And for as many as 200 yards, it was a win last year over LSU. Mm -hmm. If they stay behind, you think that again, Goes Zal's direction more and more. This one over the middle in a crowd, nowhere near the first down, though. The 24 yard line is brought in by Carter. And a quick three and out for the tide following the 54 yard Raymond Walls interception return. Southern Miss, that confidence is just going to build. Good job of mixing up the defense. It's attacking. That time they went with a three man rush. Dropped everybody back. They're mixing it up very well. And, Bill, their confidence is certainly building right now. Yeah, they're just playing extremely well. And I think, Dave, that team from the fourth quarter of Tennessee has showed up. Yep. Missing hardly a beat. A right, short kick into the wind by Bearden. Alabama roll dead at the 30. Jeff Kelly back out. And facing third and seven with 3.03 to go in the first quarter. At his own 32-yard line, a 7 to nothing lead for Southern Miss thanks to the defensive touchdown by Walls. Kelly through the air, 2 of 4. Ranked ninth in the country in passing last year. Very high percentage throw. Rarely will make a middle mistake. They bring corner blitz. He gets it to Handy. Who breaks the tackle and has a first down to the 42. Leroy Handy takes it 16 yards. And where Alabama's pass offense is not timed up in precision, this one is Southern Mississippi's quarterback, Kelly, out there with a wounded knee, sees the corner blitz. Handy, the wide receiver, makes the adjustment on the quick post, and there they are first down. Nice read. They fake and Kelly is buried. Reading that one all the way, Jarrett Johnson, the sophomore from Chiefland, Florida. And Billy Clay, the guard, was supposed to get out. He pulls out and he's supposed to escort his quarterback out to the corner to give him some time. Johnson just beat him right around the corner. C-55, the right guard coming out. He's got to lead him. He tries to go low. He took a flat angle, needed to angle back just a little bit. Misjudged Jarrett Johnson's speed. Beat him to the corner. Exactly. That's an angle relationship between the guard and the quarterback. It's got to be perfect. So after the loss of seven, second and 17, they run Derek Nix. And he found some space in the middle of the tied defense to the 45 into the secondary where Marcus Spencer had to make the stop. You know what? The two new guys, number 54, Buck Machado, number 68, Jim Hicks. Machado was a tight end two weeks ago. 
picks a redshirt freshman center having to start in the place of the absent Zeb Landers. Got the job done on that draw play, Mike. There it mix. Dangerous either way, running it or as a target out of the backfield. First down catch, Sean Mills inside the Alabama 35-yard line, a gain of 22. Sean Mills, an emerging leader of this offense, senior out of Enid, Oklahoma. Now Jeff Kelly's still going to take his hits, but a great job of protection by the O-line. They pick up the blitz. Running back picks up the outside blitz. He just steps and fires, and good running after that. The greatest equalizer in college football today is rhythm passing. Here's a perfect example. Yes, Alabama has superior talent, but it's tough to beat. Good execution. Look over the line, Southern Miss with three wideouts. And they run mix, trying to get wide. Cuts back right over the arms of Jared Johnson, who followed over from left defensive end. And Nix has a gain of three. Eric Nix, a career low, 37 yards at Tennessee, but he caught a career high five passes. So you may shut him down one way. It's hard to shut him down both. Yeah, those swing passes that are so tough to throw and tough to catch, he and Kelly have got the... Lanakis says those are EDDs, everyday drills. That's why we're good at it. Another Alabama product for the Golden Eagles. One of the talent. Kelly out of the shotgun on second and seven. Chase the clock again. Another sack for Alabama, and it's Kenny King this time. Wearing that number 55, which automatically conjures up images down here of Derek Thomas, that number now awarded annually in Derek Thomas's memory, and King has it this year. Yeah, Kenny's so quick and strong to the inside here, Jeremy can't even get a hold of him. He's trying, Mike. Gives him a shove in the back. And he's just overmatched. Well, they, yeah. They're going to have to get him some help on King because he's not being able to handle it. Yeah, and it... With that, hopeful note for the tie, the end of the first quarter, but it's Southern Miss leading thanks to Raymond Walls. Seven to nothing. Golden Eagles in the 13th ranked Crimson Tide of Alabama. Due to time constraints, we now move ahead and pick up further action. Jeff Kelly looking over the middle. He actually had two targets to pick from. He decides on Leroy Handy. Boy, he hits that one in the middle. That's a touchdown. Uh, again, not supposed to be two receivers there, but what a nice throw. Kelly, even though he got his knee hurt early in the game, he's hanging right in that pocket knowing he's going to take some hits. And Mills got pushed inside. It, it was two verticals going down that part of the field. Mills was too close, brought his man over with the throw and kick. Brought them down where they are. And in Birmingham, Southern Miss has a first and goal leading already, 7 to nothing. Running wide is Dwayne Woods, who has cut down for no gain. It's 7 to nothing, Southern Miss. We just began the second quarter. We're at Legion Field, where there's 83,000 plus, up 99% of whom are decked out in the, the crimson. And 99%, I'm real happy about that first quarter. In the first period, Jeff Kelly throws for 52 yards. They don't get much on the ground. Tyler Watts throws for only 24, and Alabama doesn't get a whole lot on the ground. The key, a turnover, which was a returned interception by Raymond Walls, 54 yards, and Southern Miss now second to goal, trying to add to that first score. Kelly to the corner of the end zone, uncovered. Leroy Handy, 13 to nothing, Golden Eagles. Kelly took a lick on his knee in the first quarter and continues to limp. And that's the only way you can tell he's hurt. Again, he knows he's going to get hit. He see him limping. He's going to be limping all night. But he's going to hang right in the pocket and make the throw. It's a tough kid. Yeah, and what happened on the pass route is the receiver was wide open. There must have been a brush off somewhere. Grant Hanna with the extra point, 14 to nothing. Jeff Bauer 
And the underdogs from Conference USA, Southern Miss, two touchdowns up at number 13, Alabama. ESPN 2's presentation of primetime college football is brought to you by Morgan Stanley Dean Witter. Move your money. Get well connected. Southern Miss, which uh, makes a habit of scaring the big-time opponents on the road. Doing it again. 14-0 at Alabama. And the tie pop up. The kickoff returned by Southern Miss inside the five and all the way for a touchdown. <laughs> Southern Miss scores Joe Henley. A 19-yard return of a fumble kickoff. Michael James is going to try and turn the corner here and get stripped. Eric Pruitt makes a great play. They practice that strip drill every single day at practice all the way through training camp from both sides and from the rear and from the front. And then rather than make the tackle and save the touchdown, Freddie Millens tried to strip it right back. 21 to nothing, Southern Mississippi. A stunning first half in Birmingham. Defensive strip. Dave Womack, the defensive coordinator for the Golden Eagles, said that was their point of emphasis this week. They've been so great on turnovers against everyone but Alabama. So they practice the strip drill, the line 11 strip drill every day in practice. They practice how to strip quarterbacks, running backs, receivers, and they're making it work for them right now, putting points on the board. Etrick Pruitt, the uh, practitioner there, and then Freddie Millens tried to do it. Uh to Joe Henley and might have brought him down around the three yard line. Instead, Henley breaks free, makes it 21 to nothing. A shocker in progress at Legion Field. Still less than a minute gone into the second quarter. But two return touchdowns for Southern Miss. This is Arvin Richard. Reverses field. He's got room up the left side. And is out across the 40, so he at least gives the tight offense some running room. He'll start in good shape after a 30-yard return. Southern Miss has a history of playing teams like Alabama close and then self-destructing against their last five ranked opponents. They have allowed the opponent's defense or special teams to score an average of eight points in those five matchups. And tonight, it's turned around for Jeff Bauer. They have an interception return of 54 yards for a touchdown, and now the fumble return. So seeing how the other half lives. Over and over this week, he said there is no way we can beat Alabama unless we get some of those plays. They've got two of them. Watts tucks and runs for a first down to the Golden Eagle 47. He picks up 12. The keys to this game were Southern Mississippi not turning the ball over, and Alabama's key was for Tyler Watts to be able to throw with precision. Southern Miss doing the job. So far, Alabama not able to mount a precision passing attack. Nice scramble by Watts, but that's not how they're going to win the game. Tyler Watts, the sophomore, has gone all the way so far at quarterback. And Ahmad Galloway pinned in on the sweep does well to get back to the line of scrimmage. Well, Mike DeVoe has told us, head coach for Alabama, that he, he was looking for his team to get an identity. They hadn't had really an identity in the first two games. And I tell you what, something better show up tonight. They're about, Alabama can't wait for them to show an identity. They need victories, not with this play. It was an underachieving defense and, a, and an offense not really sure what, what kind of an offense they were going to run. Right now, they're getting beat to the punch on every play. It's as much emotion now as it is execution. And all that emotion is on the uh, side of Southern Miss right now. Looking over there, and it is very dead on the Crimson Tide sideline. That won't help either. Incomplete intended for Jason McAdley. Holly Rowe 
Gentlemen, you said Alabama's looking for an identity. They haven't found it yet. Their sidelines are so quiet. All of the players come over the bench and they just sit there, the defense and the offense. None of the players are in front of each other talking. No leaders are emerging. The only people talking are the assistant coaches. Andrew Zhao, despite not playing, has tried to cheer up the offensive line, but other than that, it's silent. Those people haven't emerged yet. Mike told us uh, last night that he, he put out a call to the seniors to step up and, and replace those they lost last year, Sean Alexander, Chris Daniels. He may have overemphasized seniors because sophomores and juniors aren't going to be either. Losing yard, it's Terry Jones Jr., but he breaks through. And instead of a loss of six or seven, he'll actually pick up a couple. Finally wrestled down by Chad Williams, the free safety. This is a head coach's worst nightmare. Your players got Brook Trout stairs, Mike. You can't get anything, you can't ev evoke any emotion from them, and yet you've just got to stick to your knit and try to get some drives going and score a couple of touchdowns, maybe at least one touchdown before this half. Well, probably not going to happen here. As Lane Bearden gets it away with a wind at his back. Sean Mills with the fair catch at the 11. Southern Miss has stunned Alabama early. ESPN 2's presentation of primetime college football is brought to you by Coors Non-Alcoholic. It's the taste that keeps designated drivers on their game. That's Coors Non-Alcoholic. Southern Miss with a 21-point lead here in Alabama. It's a good thing because their quarterback, Jeff Kelly, is hurting right now. His left knee took a hit hard in the first quarter. It was hit again on the touchdown pass. They took him into the locker room just now. They have retaped his knee, put a sleeve on him. It's doubtful whether he'll be in for this series, but they are definitely going to get him back into the game. As a matter of fact, right now, Holly, he has just oh. emerged from the locker room. And on the first play, a running play, Dwayne Woods takes the handoff. Jeff Kelly, he's going he's gonna to take a detached limb, I would think, to keep him out of this game at this point, isn't it? They'll have to tear that thing off. Ellis Johnson, the defensive coordinator for Alabama, said, we've got to hit Kelly in this game. Well, they have certainly hit him, not illegally, but they have hit him very hard. There's his mom and dad, and the mom just hates to watch that stuff. <laughs> I mean, moms hate that stuff. Wood's still in the backfield. will change the pace from the bigger power back mix. He is more the water bug type. And cut down to the 18-yard line. ESPN Game Day presented by Discover Card. Saturdays at 11 a.m. Eastern. Chris Fowler, Kirk Street, and Lee Corso returning with college football's most complete coverage. Doubleheader next week beginning noon Saturday at West Lafayette, Minnesota against number 12 Purdue. Saturday at 7.30 Eastern. It's uh, Champaign, Illinois, where the Illini knocked off Cal today, and they host Michigan, which will wait to bounce back after their loss at UCLA. Out of the shotgun on third and three. Mills over the middle. Bobbled it and dropped it. He hangs on. It's an easy first down. Well, it's time for the Alabama Crimson Tide to start turning it up, and someone's got to do that. Bill, but we talked about when you talked about the Brook Trout look in their eyes. Uh, Holly talked about they don't have any leaders right now, but you know what? You can't you can't force somebody to lead. Somebody's got to take control naturally of this team. Someone may have to rattle a face mask or two to wake these guys up, but you can't ask somebody to do it. They have to step up themselves and do it. Well, I think you're exactly right, Mike. Hallman will at least get a roll. Not a very impressive punt. But dead near the 40, we check into the studio with Reese Davis. All right, Dave, Auburn and LSU. Josh Booty adjusted. Josh Reed for a 45-yard touchdown. The ensuing kickoff. Here goes Tim Carter. Tim Carter will take it coast to coast, 100 yards. Now, casting a pall over this game, Larry Casher, the Auburn defensive back, was hurt on a tackle. He was taken off the field in an ambulance. We'll update something on him as soon as we know something. Auburn coming from behind. Alabama will have to. From way behind. 10-20 in the second quarter. Bill Tyler Watts all the way at quarterback. The short toss. They look at Millens. 
He did something jump started on offense, and all he can manage is the line of scrimmage. Now here's Alabama with marvelous field position. They're getting the ball to Millens, and they're being run down by a speedy defense that continues to play incredibly inspired football. Again, trying to strip the ball from Millens, but they're in good field position here. Don't get much out of first down. They've got a mount of drive, and that's how you answer all this emotion from Southern Miss. Take it down the field in the end zone. And they wanted to get to Eddie Millen's the ball at least 12, 15 times today. This is Arvin Richard, who threw the ill-fated throwback pass intended for the quarterback Watts in the first quarter, which was intercepted by Raymond Walls. 54 yards later made it 7 to nothing. Now Richard in there for Galloway. And you wonder at what point is Andrew Zal going to come into the game? He's more the thrower, watch more the runner. Or so that's said, it remains to be seen. But at some point, you're down 21. You want to stay in your game plan now. You don't really want to panic just yet. You're going to have to start thinking about that. Neither one of them has thrown it very well. Watts again tries to scramble out of trouble. And whatever room he saw wasn't there very long. Well, here's the point. There was no trouble. He had excellent protection. You're right. He's standing upright in the pocket. He wasn't getting smashed the way Kelly is, and he doesn't let go of the football. You throw those things on the break, and a lot of that's experience, and he hasn't been getting to play much, but Alabama is being stoned on every drive here now. Good, they, to, be, good to be on the Southern Miss defense right now. <laughs> yeah, it's just fun. Attack. Yeah, it's just guys like you having fun, Mike. Dane Bearden, pass kick, uh, went dead at the 11, and Mills runs away from this one, and it takes a terrific tied roll, and it dead finally at the 5. 21 to nothing, 8.05 in the second quarter. We're at Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama for ESPN2's college football matchup between the Southern Miss Golden Eagles and the 13th ranked Crimson Tide of Alabama. Due to time constraints, we now move ahead and pick up further action. 21 zip Southern Miss, what killed their last drive. It was ruled a lateral pass. Watch where Kelly throws the ball. Right there, he's on the line. Look where he releases the ball. And then look where it ends up to the back, behind the line. Good call by the official. They lost a lot of yards there. Now they're putting. And that's a rare mistake for him. He doesn't normally make that mistake. Low snap. Mark Hallman handles it. Still not the prettiest kick you'll ever see, but he manages to get the roll just about every time. This one dead inside the 25. And we check in with Reese Davis. All right, guys, coming up at the half, we have some last-second drama in both Knoxville and South Bend. Michigan and Alabama played in the Orange Bowl, and now they have something else in common. And the latest to be victimized at Vic Tech. That's all coming up at the half. Not been a good day for the Big Ten, but Alabama feels a little bit better because Michigan had the same thing happen at UCLA that uh, befell them in their opening. Hey, any, any of you guys uh, think if any of the Buffalo Bills were watching... Uh, that last play, the little lateral, they might have a little flat. Yeah, they should know that. <laughs> That's called a backward pass, Mike. That's a backward pass. Tyler Watts out of the shotgun. Throws complete on first down. Millens unable to break free from Chris Vaughn. And he'll pick up about five. Clock rolling. Alabama two more timeouts. And they will go four wides in the shotgun again here. And Collins, and he's good out of bounds. Right at the first down marker. They're going to give him a pretty favorable spot before Raymond Walls makes the hit. So 2.03 with the clock stops. Yeah, and how frustrating has this been? There's their season average, 3.07. Tonight, a total of 81 yards for the Crimson Tide at home. Williams has caught three for 16. Watts looked at him, runs instead. And at the 44, a pickup of nine. Another tackle by Chris Vaughn. 
Millen's yet to run the ball and uh, yet to do much in the return game as well. But they're trying to get him 12, 15 touches. They're, they've got to pick it up in the second half. The run defense of the Golden Eagles continues to be a thing of beauty. Yeah, and what you don't want to see on second and one is that. You come up, you're going to hand it to the fullback, make your first down. He gets drilled in the backfield. Now you got third and a lot more than you'd like. And it's not such an easy matter to keep this drive going. The frustrations continue to mount for the Alabama offense. Dave, you said it about Millens also in the touches. We talked about the coaches saying 10 to 15 touches. In the first three plays of the game, Millens touched it twice. So you thought they were going to go to him early, and that was their plan to get that spark early in the game, have him do something magical that would get this team going. But since those first three plays and two touches, barely been into the game at all, especially on returns. Millen's yet to uh, break through. On the other hand, Cedric Scott, the senior defensive end out of Gulfport, has made his mark. Cedric, number 96, preseason All-American from Southern Mississippi, defensive end, has been all over the field all night. There he is again. It was hard to see that block, but it hit his armpit, and he's real happy about that. 15 career sacks, 278-pounder. Comes off the corner well. That'll help you play on Sundays. <laughs> you know, it's cool tonight. It's supposed to dip down into the 40s, but you look at Cedric, and uh, he's having no problem breaking sweat. Cedric's sweating, but I'll guarantee you the guy across from him, Sean Draper, sweating more. No, that, no, no that's, that's Dante Ellington that's trying to block him. Nobody's blocked him much. They run it again on third and one and lose yardage to Galloway again. The penetration is just remarkable, and it's Chad Williams up from free safety this time. Yeah, what they're doing is they're just hitting gaps. Sometimes they're bringing more than they could block. It's going to come at the top of your screen, just hitting gaps. Nobody hits him. He comes right outside the tight end. Terry Jones Jr. Jones going for the inside man, lets the outside man go. They're bringing more than Alabama has to block. And that's a scheme problem because he was untouched. Absolutely. He just came off the outside and made that hit in the backfield. And so some, from second and one, now we have this. And he uses his timeouts trying to mount a late first half drive. Unable to do so. Gruden's got to kick it. And Southern Miss lets it die at the 19. ESPN2, the college football triple header next week, beginning Saturday at noon from Greenville, North Carolina. Syracuse visits the Pirates of East Carolina. Six o'clock from Tallahassee, Louisville against number two, Florida State. And we will be in Fayetteville at nine Eastern 8 Central for these uh, Alabama Crimson Tide against the Arkansas Razorbacks. That's um, ESPN2 next week, and Alabama has uh, no intention of heading to Fayetteville one and two. But it's, uh, it's, it's they take a remarkable second half for that not to happen. If they do, you won't see that 13 next to their name in ranking. It'll be a lot lower than that. <laughs> Bless his heart, Kelly almost <laughs> fell down trying to... He <laughs> took that <laughs> sore knee down and said, whoa, I'm going to bolt out backwards here, and he almost fell. He's even laughing. When you're up 21 zip, you can laugh a little bit. Jeff Bauer, one and seven as the head coach against Alabama. But in charge here, 21 to nothing. Before 83,000 rather stunned fans at Legion Field in Birmingham, and we send you to the fellows at the studio, guys. Legion Field in Birmingham for ESPN2 College Football. Our matchup tonight, Southern Miss's Golden Eagles against the 13th ranked Alabama. Big surprise in this first half with Southern Miss shutting out Alabama 21 to nothing. They can thank their defense as usual, but they can also thank two return touchdowns, a 54-yard interception return by Raymond Walls and a fumbled return of a kickoff by Michael James, which was run in by Joe Henley. They also have a touchdown pass from Jeff Kelly to Leroy Handy. So 21 to nothing, Southern Miss leading number 13, Alabama. We'll have second half. 21 nothing, Southern Miss trying to make a 24 nothing here. Bad hold. Low kick, 
and the block. Now, normally you're taught here, get away from the ball if you're on the defense. Get away. But I'll tell you what, I don't blame Milo Lewis for picking it up. They need a spark. They need a big play. He tries to turn it into something. Coaches are screaming, stay away from the ball, stay away from the ball until he turns the corner and starts gaining yards. Then they're yelling, run, run, run. Yeah, that actually becomes like a punt and he crosses the line of scrimmage and you ought to stay away from it. This time it worked to Alabama's advantage. Tony Dixon got the block. And Lewis's return ends on that hard hit by Hannah. Bad option pitch. Southern Miss gets the recovery. Cedric Scott makes another huge play. So much for momentum. There's an old adage about running a little option. A team that runs a little option runs an enormous risk at the same time. There's a dead ball foul for the celebration after this recovery by Scott. Well, that's a penalty you'll take. Yep. <laughs> not too unhappy with no, that. No, no, not. You know, and that option was going nowhere. Chad Williams was there on the pitch, man. He was right on. That that play was going absolutely nowhere, and, and I agree with you, Bill. I mean, to, to run a, a sometime option offense, I think it's very, very difficult to do. Well, you're going to have plays that occur just like this if you do run an occasional option. And I disagree with you, Mike, respectfully. <laughs> but I don't fun. think that you should excuse a penalty. I think Jeff Bauer will be livid because they need to start that drive on the 20-yard line. And they need, if they're going to win this game, they need to get it up as high as they can because Alabama's going to make a move sooner or later. Good pursuit by Scott getting the ball. And I tell you, if I'm that player, I'm smiling as I'm saying I'm sorry to the coach for that penalty. <laughs> Isn't it almost <laughs> impossible, though, to ask? In that situation for them not to celebrate Kelly now showing his lack of mobility and they come after him with numbers Jared Johnson got him Kelvis White and Salim Rashid were also coming for yeah. All, yeah for all that Southern Miss is doing right and for all that Alabama is doing wrong the Alabama defense bill is keeping them at least somewhat in this game and giving them a chance I think that's a good way to say it I, I was surprised that Southern Miss was able to drive down the field starting the third right. quarter, but they did keep him out of the end zone. So on second and 19, Nix is inside the 40. Holly is with uh, some very interested Southern Miss fans down there. That's right, I'm with Janice and Tommy Kelly. And Janice, as a mom, this must be very difficult to watch your son take such a beating out there, but he's come back with such courage. He's a fighter. He, he, he loves his school. He loves Southern Mississippi, and he's going to do what he has to do for his team and for himself and the school. He loves the team. There's 17 kids from Alabama, including your son. He grew up right down the road. How important is this for them to win at Alabama? Well, he, he loves the school, Southern Mississippi. There's no greater place for him love to play, but he wants to prove that his friends and his the fans out here that, that he can play football, you know, that he's a... He's a player that can compete, but he loves Southern Mississippi. All right, well, I told Tommy I wouldn't talk to him, but he's so nervous. I said, are you going to take a breath? And he said, yes, after the game. You're so nervous. Are you always like this before the game with your son? Yeah, I'm just real concerned with him getting out safe and uh, just having a good game. Are you proud of him right now? They've come out and just jumped on Alabama. Oh, yeah. Thanks very much. Back to you, Dave. Well, he also showed he can scramble just a little bit. He hit Danny Fowler in his hands, but he couldn't bring it in. Now we're coming after Mark Hallman, one of his better efforts. And it is down inside the one. Can't get any better than that. Oh, is that fantastic? It is, and had he gone into the end zone, it would still come out to the one because he had possession in the field of play. Alex Ray. What a beautiful punt. This is execution. It just doesn't get any better than this. Alex has good concentration on the football. Nice kick right there. That's where the ball is going to end up. And he's trying to dance the tightrope to stay out, but he doesn't even have to. Now, we talked about field position. This here is your basic flat out good field position if you play in defense. My defense at least doesn't give up points after the fumbled option. Dustin McClintock tries to uh, burrow out three or four yards. Well, again, on the Southern Miss defense, they're just going to pin their ears back. They're going to hit their gaps. They're going to bring the safeties up. They're going to come after them, and they're going to 
they have them, their number. They have Alabama's number tonight. There's no, no sense in them not doing all the things they're doing. They shouldn't back off at all. They've got to keep attacking. As a rule, when you end up with the ball inside your five-yard line, that ends up in three points at least for the opposition if they're able to force you to punt them down there. 87 total yards tonight for Alabama. And they took this possession over 99 yards away from the goal. Raymond Walls brings down Ahmad Galloway. Now, we keep going back to the goal and putting it in Freddie Millen's hands as often as possible. He has not been on the field as often as you might expect for a guy they're trying to get it. 12, 15 times. He had three catches. The longest was for 11 yards. He carried one time on a reverse and picked up five yards. Return to punt, return to kickoff. That's not what they had in mind for him. Today. No, not at all. And uh, it's really kind of hard to understand. Maybe looking his way here on third and four. They'll have to burn their first time out first. 6.07 remaining. The Southern Miss shutout continues. Legion Field in Birmingham for ESPN2 College Football. Our matchup tonight, Southern Miss's Golden Eagles against the 13th ranked Alabama Crimson Tide. ESPN College Football Thursday at 7.30 Eastern comes to you from Raleigh, North Carolina. And the matchup in the ACC, Georgia Tech against North Carolina State. Our coverage begins with college football tonight, presented by Gateway. The Wolfpack looking to build on a come-from-behind victory over Indiana. We'll have further action after this timeout. If Alabama has a miracle comeback in them, it has to involve Freddie Millens, but right now Freddie Millens is not involved at all with his team interaction. He is as far away from his teammates as he can get two drops his only contribution to the third quarter. We begin the fourth quarter with Kelly firing complete to Derek Nix. Yeah, and those two drops came across the middle and big time receivers, as Mike said so well, big time receivers make big time catches and your teammates feed off that. And when you're running across the middle and you don't concentrate on the football and you drop it, that just casts a pall over the whole football team. And you see where Fred, nobody's standing there hugging on Freddie. He's got to redeem himself with his teammates. He is a great player, and they need him more desperately maybe than since he's been at Alabama. Defensively, they desperately need a stop on third and six, and they'll get it. Kelly immobilized since getting banged on his knee in the first quarter. Has to take the sack at the 42. Well, I think this is going to be an inevitable move here. The next time Alabama gets the ball, I think Andrew Zao is going to be coming into the game. I know he's warming up. He was warming up on the sidelines, getting on the headphones. You know, at this point, you need you need the spark. Uh, Watts is, is, even though the stats may look decent as far as uh, completion percentage, he's not putting him in the end zone. That's the bottom line. I think you got to make that switch. Somebody's got to tackle Tyler first. Make sure he doesn't beat Zao <laughs> into the huddle. They come after. Mark Hallman, and they don't get the ball, but they do rough the putter. Millens look for room. And is tripped up after just an eight-yard return. Jarrett Johnson coming hard after the punter Hallman. Here comes Jarrett, number 96. And the right thing to do is to stay on your feet Here's the call. Stay on your feet. Go where the ball is going to leave the punter's foot. Jarrett did not do that. It doesn't matter if you're blocked into the kicker. If you touch that kicker and he falls, they're going to call you. You know, and I have to be honest, because I've been in a, in a situation as a defensive lineman rushing, uh, rushing the punter. They don't work with the D-line much as far as the proper technique. Uh, they, they work a lot with the guys on the side or more of the athletes who they think are going to get in for the blocks. Those D linemen get in, get in there, a lot of times they don't really have a clue wait, about wait, how wait, to block you it. You told me that D linemen were the best athletes on the I field. I just trying to make up a little excuse for Jared there. That's what I thought. <laughs> all right, all right. Didn't work, did it? No. Should have blocked it, Jared. Should have blocked it. <laughs> I tried. Golden Eagles keep it going from the 46. Wayne Woods. Never got knocked off his feet. 
Oh, man, that's good running. I mean, you run a one-back set, you got to have a guy that can make the first tackler miss a lot because he doesn't have that traditional lead blocker in the fullback. This guy's a marvelous change-up for his buddy Nix. Dwayne comes in there and gives him some wiggle, and here they are, second and two. As a man, we may see smile at the end of the game. Not smiling no, right now. Not He's yet. <laughs> Yeah, that's his running back coach right down there, Gandy, Shelton Gandy, who was a marvelous player. We coached against him when I was at Alabama. He is tasting it now. He's tasting it. Bauer, former player, assistant, and now head coach at Southern Miss. And he has butted heads time after time against this Alabama team. Only a tie so far to show for his uh, first 16 meetings. But what this would mean, not just to him, not just to the guys who are currently on Southern Miss's team, but to those who may at some point be recruited, maybe even from this area by Southern Miss. You know what, before the, before the game, this is what John L. Smith had to say, Louisville head coach, about who is recruiting where. Before this game, I was down on the Alabama sideline. There was a number of recruits watching this game for Alabama. What if they're walking over to the other sideline right now, thinking about Southern Miss? Interesting that Timbuktu turns out to be in Alabama. Almost intercepted. The slant intended for Handy is broken up by Reggie Miles. But it really does speak to what a program like Southern Miss Bill has to do. Because, I mean, you send out the same letters as Alabama to the Blue Chips, and most of them are going to take their trips to Tuscaloosa, probably not to Hattiesburg. Yeah, they really are. But what you hope is that Alabama can't sign everybody. A good example is the quarterback, Kelly. Right. He was in the Alabama camp three years, and Mike Dubois said, we would love to have had Jeff Kelly, but we couldn't sign another quarterback, so he was available. Southern Miss got him. Now they're stopped by the tied defense, and they don't come close to Holman this time. Had a man down there, but uh, could not come up with the uh, down of the punt, and a marker back at the line of scrimmage. And this one is against Southern Miss. Well, I think the fans are again. We're waiting for this one to be against Alabama again to give Southern Miss another first down. Well, I think if you're Alabama, you decline this one. Just take it on the 20. On the offense, penalty is declined. First down. Very good, Mike. Well, I've, I've, thought, I've always thought you would have been a terrific head coach. Well, that was a good decision. Too many hours. <laughs> ESPN 2's presentation of primetime college football is brought to you by the new film, Meet the Parents. Starts October 6th at theaters everywhere. Alabama last shutout, November 8, 1997. 27-0 by LSU in Tuscaloosa. They're 12-22 away from another shutout, but Andrew Zhao just 34% in the first two games this year, enters for the first time tonight, and what a tall order he faces. 80 yards away, three touchdowns behind. Zhao out of the shotgun, ready to look downfield, and he finds McGadley for a pickup of eight. You're going to see a lot of this. I mean, the, right now, Southern Miss is rushing three men. It's going to look like Alabama's going to go right down the field. They're going to throw those underneath passes. Southern Miss is saying, that's fine. We're up 21. We'll give you those all day. You can't score 21 points in 12 minutes. Yeah, and the reasoning is you're not going to go all the way down the field and score without making a mistake, especially with a cold quarterback. But you got to remember, Zao took him to the championship last year. No huddle. Zao fires out for Sam Collins. And a first down at the 34. They gave Watts inside stuff. Nothing deep. 11 of 16, 57 yards for Tyler Watts. Two big drops by Freddie Millen, though, that might have gone for big yardage. Very definitive difference in arm strength between the two quarterbacks. Zhao is the superior passer. Watts the superior runner. With more experience, Junior, watch just a sophomore. That's intended for Millens, and breaking almost in time to get the pick was Keon Moore. Yeah, and Watts just needs to say a little prayer and say thank you, because he made a serious mistake in coverage. An old adage in 
throwing the football, if that corner has got a safety behind him, don't throw it on the outcut. That means he can break up on it. And there is a safety back here protecting Milo Lewis. I'm sorry, that's Keon Moore of the team. Keon Moore very nearly took that thing to the house. The neon Keon. Neon Keon. Zal looks over the middle. Plenty of time, delivers a nice catch by Antonio Carter. Good for 13 yards. Uh, you certainly see the difference with Zao in there as far as arm strength, as far as just staying in the pocket. You mentioned earlier, Bill, Watts was just getting out of the pocket when he wasn't really in trouble. Zao is hanging in that pocket with people all around him and drilling the passes. O-linemen respond, trust your protection, drill it in there. Again without a huddle, ready to go deep. Millens has a step and can't come up with it. Raymond Walls is there to make the play. That ball... If it's not slightly underthrown, you got Millen's five yards behind walls. And that's a function of not being warmed up. Zal's throwing the short stuff very nicely. That deep ball would normally have been thrown perfectly by Zal. This time, he throws it just a little short. Dave, we saw him in the Orange Bowl last year. He throws that deep ball extremely well as a rule. Well, you're right. I mean, that, that is timing because he does he have the arm strength to get it out there ahead of Freddie. He oh, he, he's got a gun. On second and ten, that one twice is almost picked off. And there is no red jersey anywhere near. Greg Brooks and uh, Leo Barnes both had chances at the pick. That's where the offensive coordinator says, son, what are you thinking? Charlie Stubbs will say, Andrew, when they get the film, what were you looking at? What did you see? I used to call him over to the side and say, what did you see? Well, but you didn't throw that ball where you wanted to throw it. He, saw, he thought, I think, Millens was going to keep going on an out route. Millens turned and stopped, and Zal threw it like he was going to go on the out. Three-man rush, third and ten, incomplete. Overthrown slightly intended for Carter. Yeah, and that immediate lift that Zal gave him by coming in and drilling a couple has now diminished, and they need to punt this football. They've not sent the punter in yet. Yeah, but they need to kick this ball if they want to win this game. They're not sending him in. Boy, I hate to say it, but I agree with you, Bill. I think they got to knock this one away. Oh, that's got to kill it you. It does kill me, because normally I'm a great... Now, I will say, if I'm Southern Miss, blitz them! Go after them! <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. No, Back no. off, keep them in front of your hand. I know, I know. <laughs> From their own 46... Nearly 11 minutes to go. Going for it on fourth and ten is Zhao. And he may keep it. Pulls up, fires another near interception. The third on this series through the hands of a defender. The second time, Greg Brooks almost had it. What you cannot do with a quarterback while he's getting himself warm, in my opinion, is to give the other team good field position by why, while you're trying to take it down the field. Folks in red leaving with 10.48 to go. Unheard of in Birmingham. We're at Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama for ESPN2's college football matchup between the Southern Miss Golden Eagles and the 13th ranked Crimson Tide of Alabama. Due to time constraints, we now move ahead and pick up further action. Jeff Bauer has been so close so often to pulling off a win like this on the road at number 13 Alabama and sensing with 5-12 remaining that it's going to be hard to let this one get out of the bag. You, know, you told me yesterday that uh, one thing that you enjoyed about coaching Alabama in Birmingham is they tended to play even harder than they do at Tuscaloosa and save their best performances for Legion Field. Uh, with that in mind, how do you explain this and, and uh, take us into the mind of Mike Dubose a little bit and how he digs out of this? Well, I think, first of all, to explain this, you have to give enormous credit to the University of Southern Mississippi and give credit where it's due. They came in here and won this game. This game was not just given to them. As for Mike Dubose, one of the prices you pay for being in a high visibility, high energy program is that when this happens, it is absolutely a nightmare. And like Coach Lombardi used to say, the winner gets all the elation. All you get if you lose one of these, especially around here, is the determination to fight back. That's the only thing that keeps you going. Eric Nix on the reverse. 
down to the 25. Now, the opposite side of that picture, the elation and joy on Jeff Bauer's sideline, Holly. He's not letting it get away, though. He gathered his offense before they took the field and said, it's simple, guys. Make first down. Use up the time on the clock. And then he went to his two leaders, Jeff Kelly and Derek Nix. He grabbed their helmets, put his eyes right up in their face mask, tilted it towards his, and told them they're the leaders. They need to protect the ball at all costs. His very first year as the head coach at Southern Miss, they knocked off Auburn 10-9. That is still the last win they've had over a ranked non-conference <laughs> opponent. Timeout called by Southern Miss with 3.49 remaining. They're next to last. So maybe the thing for Alabama fans to remember is this is a team that was number 13 themselves nationally last year. They're losing to. Last year's SEC Coach of the Year. Three minutes and 49 seconds away from falling to one and two with the trip to Arkansas in Fayetteville next week. Then they come home. South Carolina has already proven what they're capable of, knocking off Georgia last week. Knicks is going to be very close to the first down market. So Alabama, Bill, can dig their way out of this, but are they good enough to do what you'd have to do to make your fans forget this, namely win the SEC West, at least get back into the championship game and knock off Auburn in the process? Well, your fans are not going to forget this, but you can certainly salve everybody's feelings. But the only way when you're at the University of Alabama is to win the SEC, beat Auburn, and then go to the BCS Bowl. And then you might be somewhat forgiven. That's essentially what happened a year ago when there was a similar situation with the loss to Louisiana Tech. It was not as devastating as this one will be, in my opinion. Last time they started one and two, Gene Stallings first year, 1990, finished seven and five. Knicks against a tired Alabama defense, and that's close enough for another first down. It yep. is a first down. And this is, uh, <laughs> this is unreal to have them now come out and just ram the ball down your throat when you know they're going to run it. One of the things you've got to be able to do to win football games is to run the ball when the opposition knows you got to run it. Well, they hadn't been able to run it all night, and now suddenly they can run it on Alabama. And for your defense, you've got to be able to stop people when you know they're going to run, especially if you're supposed to be a great defense. hit for a loss. Also a big win for a conference that is looking to establish a reputation in football. Conference USA already very well known for great basketball led by Cincinnati but their first football win this year over a ranked opponent and their first over a ranked SEC opponent in four years back in 96 Memphis upset number eight ranked Tennessee. You know we talk about how great the defense has played Offense is in conference, you want to say. The only Division I conference last year that averaged over 20 points. Louisville led the way at 37. Southern Miss at 28. So the conference can put up some points as well. I had to let the play clock get past zero that time. He was trying to use as much clock as possible, and he let it go too far. Now, finance majors should not make that mistake. No, and, and you were talking. The guy can count. I mean, he's really smart. You were talking about how Alabama can get back into this. You know, to break it down even more, it, they got to win one game. They got to win a game. I mean, it, it, Arkansas, Mississippi, Tennessee. I mean, it, it, it's, it's South Carolina. We saw what that defense can do. <laughs> they have got a, some work to do, especially offensively on this team. And I they mean, still don't have that identity. Absolutely. They came in tonight right. wondering. Are we a running team, passing team? We want to be balanced. What are we? They didn't get any positive answers tonight. So they get ready to go to Fayetteville in a week. Again, here on ESPN 2, 9 Eastern. DuBose will use his next to last time out with a minute 47. That much between Jeff Bauer, the biggest celebration he's had in a while.
Derek Nix carrying tacklers. Look at that. My goodness. Four, five, six crimson jerseys surrounding Derek Nix, and he makes an 18-yard ramble out of it. That guy was hit just beyond the line of scrimmage. He dragged two, three, four crimson jerseys down for the first down. Let's go back down to the field to Holly. Guys, Derek Nick's brother, Tyrone, that's a coach, told me before the game that Derek is from Alabama. He's actually played in this field before in the state playoffs. And he told Tyrone before the game, I'm not nervous. I just want to play well because this is my field. I didn't believe him then, but maybe I do now. Well, he's made it his field. Made himself very much at home. Kelly taking a knee. Alabama has one more timeout, but they're letting the clock roll down to a minute. For as good as this defense played, Bill, and you were the coach and went in these meetings after a game like this, that's one of the plays I'm showing to my team tomorrow. It's third down and 12, and you hit a guy at the line of scrimmage and let him drag your defense for a first down. That tells me a lot about a team, and that's something I show. And you got to let the players figure it out. Right now, the players are figuring nothing out. Well, there have been several of those, and what you want to do is that who's trying to win the game here? Let's just look at this tape and see who's trying to win the game. And with the kind of pride these players have, I'm sure they will rally. Good heavens, they fumbled the snap <laughs> in the victory position. You yeah. know, something else to consider, if, if a two-point conversion is called correctly two weeks ago at Knoxville, that makes it 19 to 11. The Jeff Bowers team is driving at the end to try and tie it up. I mean, that call goes their way, and it certainly should have. They're looking at a 2-0 start with wins at Tennessee and at Alabama. Well, see, even Mama's happy if you can pull these things off. Yes, and you're right, Dave. They could have beaten two SEC teams, but I think they'll take what they got right now and go home happy. They knock off a giant. Number 13, Alabama shutout, 21 to nothing. And look out for Southern Miss the rest of the way. College football scoreboard coming up next. For Mike Dolan, Bill Curry, and Holly Rowe, along with our entire ESPN crew, Dave Barnett, so long from Birmingham, Alabama, where Southern Miss pulls off one of the biggest prizes of the weekend. 21 to nothing.